Hi everybody! I hope that you are practicing um, social distancing and that your family and you are safe during these times. And I wanted to remind you when I look at the calendar that tonight by 11.59 p.m. your Hobbit essays are due, so please make sure you finish those and you read all the notes and you look at all the information that is required for those essays. And I hope that you get them done and on time. Um, so today what we're going to talk about is modern uh, contemporary theater, and I also pushed back the homeworks for these um, for Wednesday. Um, I do need to go forward on Wednesday um, talking about our finals and those kinds of things. So um, please make sure you get the homework for this turned in by Wednesday by 11.59 p.m. so that you can move forward with that as well. So let's talk about modern theater. Modern theater, uh, 20th century, it takes all forms, previously, previously accepted drama and experiments with them to create this new drama. So modern theater is no holds barred, like, you know, you can do all kinds of stuff with modern theater, um, serious plays, musical theater, opera, comedies, others. Experimentation is the key word for modern theater. Um, so two cities that really um, kind of created this is New York, vaudeville, Broadway, um, Los Angeles, Hollywood. Um, there's lots of movies and different biographies out there about this time. It was a very exciting time for actors and actresses. Um, 20th century key playwrights were Tennessee Williams and Arthur Miller. And we'll look at a little bit of what Tennessee Williams um, talked about. So vaudeville is what kind of started modern theater. It's a series of separate unrelated acts, often including, um, but not limited to, so vaudeville was a whole bunch of different kind of concepts. Uh, poetry recitation, uh, dramatic scenes, monologues, songs, dancers, comedians, trained animals, magicians. So kind of, it kind of dates back to kind of the Shakespeare kind of stuff where anything worked as long as it kept people entertained and it kept the money rolling in because they needed that profit to continue um, it to work. Um, if you look at um, The Greatest Showman, um, that's a very recent uh, movie that kind of focuses on that idea of trying to have acts that kept people interested. Um, beautiful movie, but it kind of um, shows uh, that process that went through um, trying to have acts that were interesting and keeping people entertained because this is before TV people. So vaudeville, they would, you know, recreate the same act day in, day out, unless, you know, it wasn't, uh, you know, being profitable, uh, they per perfecting the craft. Um, so a lot of them, when the money kind of went away, they started more and more looking at Hollywood, producing movies, um, making money um, in that way, going into more of the film industry. So who made it big? Who were some of the people that pushed this forward? Uh, Charlie Chaplin was huge. Um, he was a huge star on um, the movie The Tramp, The Little Dictator. If you want to look at some of the YouTube videos about that, you can see some of his um, genius. W.C. Fields, um, you know, uh, he was very well known. Buster Keaton, Old Stone Face, The General, The Marx Brothers, Groucho, Harpo, and Zeppo, Duck Soup. Um, so there were a lot of interesting actors and people that, because um, if you remember film when it started, there was no sound. So they had to start with these comedies that really had to weave ideas without sound. Some other ones that, that are very familiar, the Three Stooges, Abbott and Costello, you know, Bob Hope. The Bob Hope Theater in Stockton. I mean, like, so these are very well-known names. Uh, Judy Garland, a lot of people know from The Wizard of Oz. Um, she was one of the first women to make it big um, in the movie industry, um, but she started with um, theater. So after the invention of radio and the popularity of uh, Broadway, um, it was, um, vaudeville was kind of a minor league. Um, there was also, people retired, they moved to this area that was called the Borscht Belt, um, where people, you know, they, they resided in these casino type situations, that's a picture of it, um, and it just kind of fell apart from there. The effects of vaudeville, 
So was this something important? Was this an important movement? Yes, because it created these slapstick comedies. Like there's something about Mary, um, you know, Saturday Night Live, um, Liar Liar, Jim Carrey, um, improv, um, improv, my tongue's having a problem. Improvisational comedy. Whose line is it anyway? So those kinds of um, mediums came from vaudeville. Um, so Broadway was something that came out of vaudeville. It was kind of a refinement of it. Um, it was a type of professional theater that people tried to get into to make it big. Some people can do it. Some people cannot. Um, so most Broadway shows um, intend to make a profit. They have producers or people that are called backers. And so a lot of shows are open-ended. If they make the money, they continue. If no one shows, then they don't. If you look at Cats, that was a musical production where it just went on and on and on because people loved it. People kept on going to see it. Um, so it just depends on critical response, word of mouth, um, people being interested in the content. So Broadway shows really reflect the times of what people are interested in. So could there be a Broadway show on coronavirus? Yes, it's possible. Um, as you know, our society ebbs and flows depending on what people are interested in. So what types of plays? There's musical theater, like I just talked about, Cats. Um, they're my favorites. I love musical theater. Uh, I love the music from musical theater. Um, there's so many different beautiful shows. Fan of the Opera. There's Cats. Um, there's Miss Saigon. Um, there's Les Miserables. Uh, you know, just if you've never seen musical theater, please, I beg of you, check it out. Um, there's lots of musical theater that happens locally. You can't replace live theater. It's it's a beautiful thing that can happen. And then there's also types that are called straights. This is the type of modern theater that you've been reading in the textbook. So straights, Cat on a Hot Tin Roof, Tennessee Williams, A Streetcar Named Desire, Stella! If you've never watched any of Streetcar Named Desire, you must. Um, it really reflects the emotional turmoil of society and limitations and those kinds of things. Um, Cat on a Hot Tin Roof is also a great example to watch snippets of these on YouTube. You'll see the emotion and the drama that's packed in them to see how they work. Uh, the Crucible, Arthur Miller did The Crucible, Death of a Salesman. So let's talk a little bit of Tennessee Williams, A Streetcar Named Desire, Cat on a Haunt Tin Roof. Um, these streets really reflect, like I said, personal feelings and um, emotions. So A Streetcar Named Desire, leading characters was Blanche DeBose, um, was played by Jessica Tandy, Stanley Kual Kualzowski was Marlon Brando. Um, Brando, it, it was his Im important theater debut, and it really, he was in a lot of other theater too, but this really made him, um, if you know Marlon Brando, I mean, like, he's been in so many things, The Godfather, Apocalypse Now, On the Waterfront. I mean, like, he is quintessential, um, but a lot of really good movie actors come from Broadway and learning their, they say, their, their acting chops from um, those Broadway um, shows. So if you don't know, type in some of your favorite actors, and a lot of them come from Broadway or these Broadway shows. So that's all for now, everybody. Please take your notes, and please get your Hobbit essay done that's due tonight. Bye, everybody. Have a good day, and be safe. Thank you.